Multiple fans alerted us that they had seen Ned uh, and an employee engaging in public romantic behavior. Throughout this video, there will be things that we want to say or go into further, but as I'm sure you're aware, there are some legal issues we have to consider as we go through everything. What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Behavioral Arts. My name is Spidey and I use my degree in Sociology and Psychology, my certifications in Criminal Interrogation and Body Language Analysis, and over 10 years as an award-winning mentalist to teach body language and behavioral analysis on stages and television shows all over the world. This week we are looking at The Try Guys, an extremely popular YouTube channel which descended into chaos when one of its members, Ned Falmer, was caught cheating on his wife with one of their employees. Shortly after, the three other members, Eugene, Zach and Keith, made a video straight to camera, no edits, where they told the viewers what was happening and what was going to happen moving forward. And it is an all-you-can-eat body language buffet. There is so much going on and I'm really excited to dive into this with you and look at the body language, the facial expressions, the word choice, and what it might reveal about what they're feeling, what they're struggling with, and what they're hiding. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Now I like to let you form your own opinion before I get in there with my analysis and that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm not gonna play the whole video, just a couple of clips where I think there's a lot of interesting nonverbal communication going on. Take a look, look at all three members, look at the word choice, look at the overall energy, and try to see what you're feeling. Here it is. Ned Fulmer is no longer working with the Try Guys. By now, we're assuming you've seen the Reddit threads, and TikToks, and tweets, and news articles. We wanna give you a timeline of what's transpired and some transparency into our decision making. Throughout this video, there will be things that we want to say or go into further, but as I'm sure you're aware, there are some legal issues we have to consider as we go through everything. On Labor Day weekend, multiple fans alerted us that they had seen Ned uh, and an employee engaging in public romantic behavior. We reached out to check on that employee. Uh, Ned confirmed the reports and since confirmed that this had been going on for some time, which was obviously very shocking to us, and we just want you to know that we had no idea this was going on. Uh, all of that information was just as shocking to us as all of this has been for you this week. From the jump, we were acutely aware of just how contrary this was to the values of the company we've built and those of everyone who works here. This is something we took very seriously. We refused to sweep things under the rug. That is not who we are and it's not what we stand for. So on Friday, September 16th, the three of us signed written consent of the members of Second Try LLC approving the removal of Ned as a manager and an employee. We chose not to rush into the announcement for a few reasons. Namely, there are real people who have been affected. I don't know that we'll ever be able to fully articulate the pain we feel at this moment. It's hard to rewatch old videos that we love and are proud of. We're losing a friend, we're losing someone we, we built a company with, we have countless memories with. We, we just made a TV show together. It's, I'm sure many of you feel the same way. It's weird. We're sorry that this ever happened and we, we don't know what more to say. And we also have some branded videos that we've already committed to. So when you see a video that's sponsored in a few weeks and you're like, oh, that's kind of weird. Well, yeah, it is kind of weird. Um, it's just how things are and that, that's why. Look, I get that when stuff like this happens, there's going to be speculation and gossip. And we ask that you respect the privacy of the family members and employees who may be caught up in this. We also wanna remind you that the internet has a tendency to be a lot harsher towards women than men. So please, we ask that you exercise kindness. But it's gonna be hard. It's, this whole thing is gonna be really hard. And we imagine you have lots of questions, a lot more questions right now, and, and we're gonna have more to say in the future. Uh, just right now, we're focused on bringing the best content possible between now and the end of the year, and then figuring out what the future of this channel looks like from there. Okay, so there it was, once again, a lot going on here, and it is time for your first impression comment. So, pause the video, you might have to go back and watch it numerous times. I did, because with analysis, it's very rare that we have to analyze more than one person at a time. Usually we could really focus on one person, look at them, listen to them. But in this case, we're getting a lot of information from the two other members of the team who aren't speaking. So you might need to look at it one or two more times, but when you're ready, pause the video, head down to the comments and give me your first impression. What are you feeling? What do you think is happening? You can focus on one of the members. 
You can focus a little bit on all three. You can compare them and see how it's different or how it's the same. Let me know in the comments what you think and what you saw with their nonverbal communication. Okay, now it's my turn. We're gonna dive into these clips one at a time. And for each one, I'm always gonna start by doing an analysis of the person who's speaking in that segment and then what's going on with the other two because very often the reactions of the two that aren't speaking is giving us as much, if not more information than the one who is speaking. So let's start right from the top. Ned Fulmer is no longer working with the Try Guys. By now we're assuming you've seen the Reddit threads and TikToks and tweets and news articles. We wanna give you a timeline of what's transpired and some transparency into our decision making. Throughout this video, there will be things that we want to say or go into further, but as I'm sure you're aware, there are some legal issues we have to consider as we go through everything. All right, so in this one, Zach is doing all of the talking. And I want to start by talking about a concept that we hear very often in nonverbal communication, and there's often a misconception about it. So I want to start by highlighting the difference between baseline behaviors and idiosyncratic behaviors, because they're two different things and they're often used interchangeably. So baseline is your behavior when you're not under stress, the way a person normally behaves. So to baseline the Try Guys, we can't do it from the beginning of this video because from the moment this video starts, they're already under stress. So we have to go back and look at their other videos. And if we watch their other videos, and I'm sure a lot of you have because it's a massive YouTube channel, you'll notice that right off the get-go, something is different in this video. In their other videos, they're laughing, they're smiley, they're positive, they're very animated. And in this video, it's gloomier, it's slower, it's more serious, it's a very different tone. So the entire video deviates from their baseline. Idiosyncratic behaviors are behaviors that we see in a specific person under a specific circumstance. And the best example of that is Zach throughout this entire interview, whether he's the one speaking or it's the other two, we're seeing a lot of eye flutters. That's when the eyes flutter like this, like really rapidly, a couple of times in a row. And we're seeing a lot of lip compressions. That's when the lips come together like this. And he's doing both of these things a lot throughout this interview, and that is not in his baseline. So if we go look at other videos of his, he has a very normal blink rate, and he doesn't really flutter that often, and lip compressions are not something he does extremely often. So what does that tell me? Well, eye flutters usually are consistent with having a hard time processing information, whether it's something we're saying and we're having a hard time finding the right words, or it's something someone else is saying and we're having a hard time processing it. It also happens in pre-aggression. When we're getting aggressive or a situation is heating up, we tend to see those eye flutters. And again, it has to do with processing. So I think that that's very indicative of what's going on in this interview. I think throughout this whole thing, he's having a hard time still processing what happened. I think he's feeling a little bit of that aggression. And that's why we're seeing the eye flutters throughout. It's almost overwhelming to try to look at it each time it happens and say, oh, why did it happen there? Why did it happen there? I think it's the whole situation that he's having a hard time dealing with. Then we have the lip compression. Now lip compression is very consistent with disagreement or withheld opinion. Basically, when there's something we're thinking but don't really wanna say it. And again, I think it's perfect. I think there's a lot here that legally they can't say. I think there's a lot here that he wants to say, but they've decided this is the script we're sticking to. So whether it's one of the other two speaking or he's saying something, we're getting a lot of that processing and that withheld words. Another thing we're seeing a lot with Zach, and in fact, we see it right as the video starts, is pacifying gestures. So pacifiers, also known as adapters or self-soothing gestures, they all basically mean the same thing, are any gestures that we do to try to calm ourselves down and adapt to the situation. And they often are repetitive. So right in the beginning, we see him wringing his hands like this, he's going back and forth. And then as he's talking, very often his fingers collapse like this, and we see massaging gestures. Every now and then they do come out like this in what we call a steeple, which is confident, and he is speaking confidently. His words are coming out confidently, but we're seeing those massaging gestures. Now this is obviously a planned video. Each of them knows exactly when they're supposed to start speaking. They're not talking over each other. They're speaking very clearly, concisely, and they're looking at the camera. So whether they have a monitor with the entire script or just bullet points, this is a planned, message that they all agreed on and was pre-written. And they decided to start by talking about social media. So Zach says the Reddit threads, the, the TikToks, the tweets, the news articles, 
And that's the thing they choose to mention first. And I think this is a huge indication as to where their priorities are. I think that their main priorities here are, for one thing, to get ahead of the narrative and make sure the right narrative is being spread out there. And second, to do damage control on their public image as a group, to make sure that the actions of one does not reflect on the brand. And that obviously is highly correlated to social media and what the news and social media is talking about. As such, look at Zach's face when he's talking about social media. When he's talking about the TikToks, the tweets, the news articles, he's smiling. And he doesn't smile very much throughout this entire video, but right there he's smiling. And if you look at it, it's not a real smile. It's not what we call a Duchenne smile, which is where the cheeks go up and you see wrinkling on the sides of the eyes. It's not a real smile of joy and happiness. It's a sarcastic smile, a smile of mockery, as he's just laughing about that narrative. Now, while we're on the subject of social media, I want to talk about Keith for a moment. So as Zach is listing the social medias, we see something from him as well. At the very moment that he's talking about the TikToks, the tweets, the news articles, Keith has that eye flutter, and for him, this isn't happening anywhere near as much as Zach throughout this video. So I think he's thinking about those news articles, he's processing the narrative that's out there, and we see a face touch, which is associated with high stress. This is from the University of Granada. They noticed that during high stress, we tend to touch our face a lot. So we see him touch his face, his hand comes down, and now it's no longer resting on his leg like this, but it's in a fist. And it's a pretty deliberate fist. As it comes down, and he looks down, and when he comes up, he's smiling. It's not a big smile, but we see a small kind of smile on his face. So this series of behaviors for me indicates that the moment those news articles came up, Keith remembered the narrative. I think he has a problem with it. His stress went up. He's angry about what's going on out there. But here's the thing about Keith. He's comic relief. If you watch the Try Guys, he's constantly deflecting with humor. It's what he does. And we're gonna see a lot of signs of that throughout this video, but I think the moment he's feeling that stress or anger, he doesn't like it, especially in front of the camera, that's not his character. So he looks down, he hits that reset button, and he comes up with a smile. Now his hand is still giving him away, but his demeanor, his face especially, does show calmness, and he's just smiling. Speaking of making a fist, the fingers coming in is called digital flexion. When we're feeling stressed or when we're feeling aggravated or angry, the fingers come in. It's a subconscious manifestation of when we talk about freeze, fight, or flight response, it's the fight response. When we're feeling like there's a conflict ahead, those fingers come in. As we relax, the fingers slowly come out. So speaking of this, let's take a look at Eugene on the left. As Zach is talking about what they want to do. They want to be transparent. They want to come out and talk about this. We see Eugene nodding, like it's important. This, this is important for us. This is what we're here to do. I agree. It's a nod of agreement. But we see that right hand go into a fist. Now, to a lot of the fans watching this, Eugene is the one that's the most concerning because usually he's positive, you know, he, he's great on camera, very well expressed. But here we're seeing a lot of anger, that tension in the jaw right from the get-go, a lot of stuff happening with the lips, and here we're seeing that kind of aggression. He's really angry about this, and I, I don't even think you need to study body language to see that he's angry about this. Right at the end, we get one of my favorite little clusters of nonverbal communication as he says, some legal issues we have to consider as we go through everything. Right as he says that, his eyes are closed and we get a very quick shoulder shrug, both his shoulders go up like this, and his eyebrows go up as well, very quickly. It's almost easy to miss the eyebrows. Now we talk a lot about eyebrow flashing on the channel and what it might mean in a social context, but this is not exactly an eyebrow flash because it's happening at the exact same time as that shoulder shrug. So those eyebrows are part of a shrug cluster. They are shrugging along with the shoulders. The best research in the world on shrugging was conducted by Camille Debras at Université Paris-Nanterre, and she discovered that shrugging can happen in a lot of different ways. But most often, the shoulders or the mouth are gonna be part of a shrug cluster. The hands, so the hands or the eyebrows can sometimes be also part of that shrug. It's rare that we shrug just with our hands or just with our eyebrows. It's often kind of a supporting character in the shrug. So whether we shrug with just our shoulders, our shoulders and our mouth, 
our shoulders, our mouth, and our eyebrows? Our shoulders, our mouth, our eyebrows, and our hands? Or any combination of those four parts? She classified shrugs into three categories. So whenever we see anyone doing any combination of these, it's probably due to one of these three categories. The first is shrugs of attitude. So I can't do anything. I'm not doing this. Or I don't have the power to do this. I, I, you have the power. Someone else has the power. So those are shrugs of attitude. It's my attitude towards the situation. The second category is shrugs of affect. Like I'm not affected by this. I don't care. Or I don't like this. And that will often come with a little bit more of a cringe along with that shrug. Finally, we have what she calls epistemic shrugs, but simply means a lack of knowledge. So either I don't know, or I have nothing to add to this. I have no information to add to what we already agree on. And those are very common, by the way. In most cases, when I see a shrug, I default to I don't know, or I have nothing to add. Notice how often like someone makes a good point and you go, Yep, we get that mouth struggle out like, yep, I got nothing to add to that. I can't say anything more, which might explain the tightness of the lips. But to sum it up effectively, the research shows that shrugging denotes a lack of something. I don't know, I don't care, I don't want to do this, I don't have the power to do this, so I don't something. There's a shortcoming. Now later in this video, there's another shrug from Zach, where after he shrugs, he says what he's thinking, and it's perfect. It's exactly what the research shows, and it's a beautiful moment. We're going to get to that in just a bit. But right here, he shrugs as he's saying, legal issues we have to consider as we go through everything. And he does that shrug right there. So I think it's one of two possibilities. It's either I really don't want to be doing this, so it's an attitude shrug, like I, I, I don't want to be doing this, I don't want to be talking about this. The second possibility for me is I don't agree with what I'm saying. Because he says, as we go through everything, and as he says that, he does that. And I think it might mean like, we're not actually going to be going through everything. And they're transparent about this. They say there's a lot of things that they can't talk about. And I think this is just his brain going, well, we're not going to be talking about everything. But I'm saying that, but it won't be everything. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you think it's more of a, I don't want to be doing this? So it's like, attitude towards the whole topic. He's not sure he wants to be doing this. Is it more of a confirmation that we're not going to be getting everything? So more of a disagreement with what he's saying. I, I, I don't agree that we're going to be going through everything. Or is it something else? Is it a lack of something else? A shortcoming of something else? Why do you think that shrug happened? Let me know in the comments. All right, now we're going to jump into my favorite clip of all of these. And I'm going to dispel two body language myths that a lot of people think are true when they're not. But before we do, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more behavioral analysis content. On Labor Day weekend, multiple fans alerted us that they had seen Ned uh, and an employee engaging in public romantic behavior. We reached out to check on that employee. Uh, Ned confirmed the reports and since confirmed that this had been going on for some time, which was obviously very shocking to us. And we just want you to know that we had no idea this was going on. Uh, all of that information was just as shocking to us as all of this has been for you this week. All right, so I'm really interested in one sentence that uh, Keith says here. It's when he says, we had no idea what was going on. All of that information was just as shocking to us as all of that has been to you. So there are two things that happen there. And I have seen endless comments on the internet about these two gestures. So two things happen. One, for the first time during his segment here, he breaks eye contact. So as he's saying, uh, all this information was, was just as shocking to us. You know, we didn't know for the first time. Up until then, he's looking at the camera. He breaks eye contact as he's saying that. The second thing is we see a no gesture. So as he's saying that, he looks away and he does no. And there are so many comments saying, he's being deceptive. They totally knew because he broke eye contact and liars break eye contact and he's shaking no with his head. So he's lying because he disagrees with what he just said. So those are two of the biggest myths that circulate in body language all over the internet. Well, they're kind of half myths in that in certain situations they can be true, but you'd be surprised how often they're not. In her amazing research titled Lying Eyes, Why Liars Seek Deliberate Eye Contact, Samantha Mann found that in a lot of cases, liars will increase eye contact. In other words, they may not be looking at you while they're talking, but just as the lie comes, they focus on you a little bit more. And this is because they want to see how their lie is doing, if you're buying their lie. 
Now think about Keith for a second. He's very charismatic, he speaks very well, very articulate. The guy makes content for a living. If he was gonna lie about something, I actually think he would fall right into that category. I think he would look right into the lens and deliver that lie very effectively. I think the reason he's looking away here is more related to the shame that he feels within himself. We'll get back to this in just a second. Let's talk about the second gesture we see there, this no gesture. As he's talking about what he's saying, you know, this information was just as shocking to us. We're seeing a no gesture in his head. So what does a no gesture indicate? Does it mean someone's lying? Well, not really. Whenever you're talking to someone and you see this no gesture, whether they're the ones talking or they're listening to something, remember the four dis sentiments. Sentiments that start with D-I-S. Disbelief, disagreement, disappointment, and disapproval. So in most cases, in the majority of cases, that's what's happening when someone is doing this in a social interaction. So I could be telling you a very truthful story of something that happened during my day, but I'm having a hard time believing it. I'm having a hard time processing it. So as I'm telling you, you might see me do this, as honest as it is. Or I might tell you something that a friend of mine did and I'm disappointed. I don't agree, I disapprove. So as I tell you that, you might see me, you know, you won't believe what he did. It's truthful, but you might see this. Now, it's possible that I could be saying something and there's an inner disagreement. So maybe you're not getting the full truth and you might see this as I say it. But to see someone do that and immediately assume that they're lying, no, it, it, you, that's not how lie detection works. You can't see any one gesture and assume that someone's lying immediately, least of all this, because of the four things that it could mean, one of them is closely related to deception. So right at the end when Keith is saying that they didn't know, that they were just as shocked by the news, can it be that looking away and shaking his head no like this indicates that there's inner conflict there? and that maybe it's not the full truth. It can mean that, but I think it's a heck of a lot more consistent with disbelief, like he still can't believe what happened, disapproval, disappointment, maybe a little bit of disapproval in what his friend or colleague did, but also a bit of disappointment in himself for not seeing the signs or not being aware of what's going on. I think that could very well be the reason that he looks away. We often look away in shame. So I think he's feeling a little bit of shame here. Uh, he doesn't approve of it. He's feeling negative emotions. Speaking of no gestures and the four dis sentiments, while Keith is saying that they looked into it and found out that this had been going on for quite some time, we see Eugene sitting there with that same very stoic vibe and he's doing a no gesture. So here's what's really interesting about that. That no gesture is not only the feeling of an emotion, but more importantly, the communication of an emotion, a deliberate communication. What I mean by that is, in that moment, he's not just feeling that he doesn't approve with what Ned did, he wants you as his audience to know that he doesn't approve of what Ned did. When we see this head gesture combined with an emotion, like surprise, like you might tell me something and I go, no, as I listen to you. When it's combined with an emotion, when it's the first time that we're processing that news, this no gesture might be subconscious and it's actually us just having a hard time with this. We don't know it's happening, we're just, we're in disbelief, we're, 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 we're disappointed in someone, you might get sad or angry as you go, I, I can't believe what just happened, but you might see an eye block or something like this. This is when we're feeling that emotion. But when something isn't new, when we're not getting emotional about it, when it's not hitting us for the first time, and we see someone doing that, whether they're talking, and very often when someone else is talking, it's not that he's being hit by that emotion. This no gesture is not because he's realizing right now, oh my God, I disapprove this so much. He already made that decision. They had meetings about this, they talked about this, he processed this, he read about it online, he talked about it with Ned, he probably got really angry about it, but in this moment, that emotion isn't hitting him. We're not really seeing a shift or a spike in emotion. The message is, I don't approve of this, but more importantly, I want you, the viewer, to know that I don't approve of this. I'm on a lot of YouTube panels with a lot of other YouTubers, and quite often I catch myself doing this kind of thing when someone else is talking about something that I passionately disagree with or I disapprove of. It's not because I'm feeling that disapproval in that moment. It's that I'm trying to communicate it to the audience that I'm really not down with this. And I think that's exactly what this is. I'm not saying it's not genuine. He's genuinely disappointed in what happened with Ned. He genuinely disapproves of that behavior. 
But in this moment, it's more about the communication of that emotion than the feeling of that emotion. Right at the end of that clip, if we look at Shrugmaster Zach, we see a mouth shrug, just a mouth shrug. As uh, Keith is wrapping up, we get one of these. And I think if we go back to Camille Debra and the reasons that we shrug, this is an epistemic shrug that denotes, I have nothing to add to that. What you just said, that was good and I have nothing to add. And again, that's something we see very often like, yep, agreed. Especially with that nod, I think he's, that's exactly what that is. From the jump, we were acutely aware of just how contrary this was to the values of the company we've built and those of everyone who works here. This is something we took very seriously. We refused to sweep things under the rug. That is not who we are and it's not what we stand for. All right, now it's finally time for Eugene to speak. Now, before we look at his nonverbal communication, I wanna talk about something that I talk a lot about in my videos, and that's decisions. So there's a lot of decisions that are being done here, and I wanna talk about two of them in particular. One of them is the fact that it's three guys sitting on one couch. This was a decision, and I think it was a very good decision because they could be standing, they could be sitting on individual chairs, they decided to be on the same couch very close together. This subconsciously communicates solidarity. They're together on this, they agree on this, this is something they're doing together. The second decision I wanna talk about is Eugene's. So he chose to wear these leather combat boots and an outfit that a lot of commenters online are saying remind them of something you might see in a fighting video game, like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, like he's here to fight. And although I find that interesting, what I find more interesting is the color. From top to bottom, he's in black. And this isn't uncommon for Eugene. He does very often pull off goth styles and he pulls it off really well, but he also very often pulls off very colorful outfits. So he made this decision to be in this video dressed entirely in black. And I think this for him was premeditated and sets the mood. It goes along with this demeanor that he has of full seriousness. There's nothing fun about this, There's nothing colorful, nothing positive. If we look at his body language, his cadence, his tone, uh, it's very obvious that of the three, he's the one who's the most aggressively pissed off. We could see that cadence, he's spitting those words with those chin thrusts. He's lunging almost at the camera. We have the hand, his illustrators are quite abrupt. Illustrators are gestures we use when we speak to accentuate the things we're saying. And he's got, you know, the company we've built and everyone works here. Like everything is, he's pissed here. Why do you think Eugene is the one who's the most upset of the three? Well, I would assume that Eugene has struggled with identity a lot throughout his life. And I think for him, because he struggled to, and, and committed to who he is as a person and struggled to bring that forward honestly, openly, and probably was met with adversity, I think identity is so important to him. So when something like this happens, where it compromises the fans looking at it and going, wait a second, are these try guys not what they seem? Are they, you know, because that guy seemed like he was really into his wife. So I think Eugene feels threatened by that. But I think when something comes in and threatens his identity and the identity of this channel, he takes that personally. And I think that's why of the three, he's the most upset. I want you to notice something beautiful that happens. The moment he mentions the values of the company we've built in perfect synchronicity at the exact same split second, Zach and Keith nod along. It's not like one of them starts and then it influences the other one to go because sometimes we see that like mirroring you know, somebody does something, somebody else does it. It's not that. They both not at the exact same second in agreement. The, these are not the values of the company we've built and both of them go like this. And again, go back to what I said earlier, this isn't only agreement, it's like we want you to know this is not the values of the company we built. We agree with that, both at the exact same time. Speaking of the other two, let's talk about just the strangest facial expression that I saw on Keith. And this honestly had me scratching my head really bad. I looked at it like probably 10 times. I called Chase Hughes, which you all know from the behavior panel. I was like, Chase, what is this? We had a debate over it for 20 minutes. Uh, and the only reason I survived that confusion is because he does the same gesture later. So I was like, okay, 
This is something that he does. It wasn't just this one-off. So let's talk about it now, and then we'll talk about it later again when it happens. So just as Eugene goes, this, and he really emphasizes that this is something that we take very seriously, Keith does something really weird. His lips come up, and it's, it's a half smile and half the expression of disgust. So the world leading expert on universal emotions is Paul Ekman. He did the research and discovered the emotions that every human being feels and expresses the same way. And one of them is disgust. When we're disgusted, our lips go up like this and it crinkles the side of the nose like this. So, like that. That's what's happening with Keith. But there's also a smile there. So, it's not uncommon. That's not the part that puzzled me. Because we often do see a bit of a smile with disgust and that's kind of like when we see something like disgusting but also a little funny, like an icky or ew type thing, we might be like, but that's gross, you know, that kind of thing. And that's what it's consistent with. But it's such a strange time for that to happen. Now the other thing that's really important is this. People who wear glasses very often smile with raising this entire part of their face. So instead of the just the corners here going up like this, people with glasses will often smile like this because it keeps their glasses up because when they're laughing they don't want their glasses side down so as a reflex they develop this smile that's a very raised smile and Keith does that. If you watch his other content, not always, he often smiles without doing that but quite often he smiles with this kind of a smile instead of just this kind of a smile. So that was one part that made me go, okay, this is something that he does. So to figure out what this gesture is, let's look at what else happens. So he does that, this kind of raised, disgust smile, and he does it as Eugene says this, and then Eugene goes on to say that this is something that we take very seriously, and as he says seriously, Keith closes his eyes, we see that lip compression as he nods and he looks down. So let me tell you exactly what I think happened here. I think something made him laugh, whether it's something behind the camera or simply the fact that He's uncomfortable in stressful situations. Again, remember Keith is comic relief. Always comedy, always breaking the tension. Maybe even just seeing Eugene like in this very serious tone like this, like that the way he just said that, maybe it just made him laugh in that moment. But the moment Eugene said, this is something we take seriously, I think Keith may have realized, okay, this is not the time to be laughing or smiling, which is why we see that eye block, like, oh, I, you know, I don't want to face what I'm doing here, I don't want to see myself smiling here. And we see that smile turn into a lip compression. And he looks down and he nods along like, yeah, we do take this seriously. Almost like this is not the time to be laughing. And then he comes back up. A big part of the reason that I believe that that's what's happening is once again, because later we're going to see that kind of disgust smile again, but without any of the other emotions. So there isn't really much going on. I think this is just often baseline for him. Not always, but often I think that's just the way he smiles. And it might be the way he smiles when he's trying to hold back a smile, like he's aware that this isn't the time to smile. So I think that's what we're seeing here. I think it looks like disgust, but I personally don't think that it is. Quick little side note, both times that he does it in the video, it's not only when he's the next one to speak, but just as he's about to speak, like the other person's wrapping up, that's when it happens both times. Now, that is not a gesture that I've ever seen as a preparation to speak. So I think that might be more maybe coincidence more than anything else. So on Friday, September 16th, the three of us signed written consent of the members of Second Try LLC approving the removal of Ned as a manager and an employee. We chose not to rush into the announcement for a few reasons. Namely, there are real people who have been affected. So throughout this whole thing, I think Keith is the one who seems the most unaffected. He's just delivering his lines, saying what he has to say, laying down the facts, and we're not seeing too much sadness or disappointment. And I don't think it's because he's not feeling sad, angry, disappointed, just like the other two. I just think, once again, comic relief, humor, people who use humor tend to hide behind humor. And this is not a situation where he can do that. There are a couple of times where we see just a smile, he's trying to keep things light or as light as you possibly can without making fun of the situation. But overall, I just feel like it's not that he's not feeling it, it's just that he's not comfortable showing his vulnerabilities and sadness in front of the camera. It's not what he does best. 
humor is what he does best. But in that clip, I'm actually more interested in the body language we're getting from Zach. So once again, that's the gentleman in the middle. And the moment Keith says that they let Ned go as a manager and as an employee, we get a whole bunch of stuff coming from Zach. So first, the moment he says it, we see him hang his head down. It all, it's not a slow thing like this because it, it just clunk, it just drops. Then we see that pacifying with the thumbs, self-soothing like this as he looks down. And then we see a nod that's really interesting there. We see, it's not that, because you would kind of expect to see that disbelief, like oh, disappointment, disbelief, but he doesn't. It's a nod as he's saying that. Then he comes up, we see a lip lick and a hard swallow, like a really deep swallow. We see his Adam's apple actually go all the way up then all the way down. That's a really stressful, hard swallow. So let's look at these things separately. Let's start with the head down. Typically when you see someone just clunk their heads down like this or look away quickly, it's typically because they were hit by a negative emotion. In the way that we evolved, letting people see our vulnerability was not a good decision because if your enemy could see your vulnerability or your weakness, it puts you in a very compromising situation. So we're very good at hiding when we feel negative emotions. Notice how often when someone's gonna cry or they get hit by emotion, they might turn away and go, I, they, you might say, I'm sorry, as they do this, or they look down. This is very common, so that's one. I think he just got hit by a negative emotion as Keith said that. Then we have the pacifier, we covered this, self-soothing. Then we have the nod. We'll come back to that in just a sec, because we have the lip lick. Now, lip licking, we talk a lot about this, uh, is a very good indication of stress for three reasons. The first is, when we're stressed, the mouth dries up. Licking lips corrects that. Two, grooming. When we're stressed about something, we want to appear better. We want to make sure people don't see that stress. So we groom to bring more color to the lips. Grooming is any gesture that we do to fix ourselves, to appear, to present ourselves better. And that does happen in stress. Uh, finally, the tongue jut, which is when we're disgusted with an idea. Like think of a baby who eats something they don't like, they might go, and that also happens with thoughts that we don't like, that leave a sour taste in our mouth, where something happens and we might just do that. But that usually has a face scrunching. He doesn't have much of a face scrunching there. So I think it's simply high stress, correcting uh, the lack of moisture. Then we have the Adam's apple, which again is a big sign of stress. When you see that big gulp where the Adam's apple goes all the way up and all the way down, just another sign of stress. So let me tell you what all this is indicating to me. I would bet that of the three of them, I think Zach is the one who's struggling the most with the decision. I think Eugene is pretty clear that he's really angry, really pissed off. He's like, no, this is what we need to do. I think Keith is being sensible about it as well. I think Zach, due to like, this is a friend. Yes, he did something unacceptable, something disgusting, not just to hurt his wife that they're all friends with, but to hurt the brand, their livelihood. He, he, this was a betrayal. But I think ultimately, Zach is looking at this like, yes, it is, but like, it's still our good friend, our colleague. He helped us build this brand over the years, and I think he struggled a lot with it. This might be why we're seeing a lot of those eye flutters, a lot of those lip compressions, and I think in this moment, when Keith is talking about how they made this decision to get rid of him, I think ultimately he agrees with the decision, but it's stressing him out as he's thinking about it, and I think that that nod is him going, yep, this was the right decision. I think he has to keep telling himself that, like keep reminding himself that this is the right thing to do. I don't know that we'll ever be able to fully articulate the pain we feel at this moment. It's hard to rewatch old videos that we love and are proud of. We're losing a friend, we're losing someone we, we built a company with, we have countless memories with. We, we just made a TV show together. It's, and I'm sure many of you feel the same way. It's weird. We're sorry that this ever happened and we, we don't know what more to say. Oh man, he really earned the title Shrug Master Zach on that one because he shrugs exactly twice. In fact, his shoulders move exactly twice and it's perfect. Going back to what we said earlier, it's perfect. We'll circle back to that. Let's talk a little bit about the overall demeanor. The voice is trembling, we're seeing sadness. I think anyone, even without studying body language once again, could look at this and go, Okay, yeah, this guy's conflicted, he's sad. Look at the words. I mean, it goes right back to what I said before. We're losing a friend, someone we built this company with. So again, I think for him, there was a lot of struggle. Like he acknowledges that this was a good friend, someone that was a very big part of their journey. 
And that only reconfirms for me that earlier that was self-reassurance, that this was the right thing to do. As he's talking, uh, we're seeing the eyebrows down here like this. This is consistent with anger, but it's also consistent with confusion or deep thought. So I think he's confused. He's thinking about it. What's the right thing to do? Why did this happen? Uh, you know, he's, he's reflecting as he talks about the TV show, we see a bittersweet smile. He says, we built a TV show together. You know, like you have to understand we did all these things and we're so proud of this. And he's saying how he goes back and he watches these things. So I feel like more than the other two, he really feels that connection. And this may have been harder for him uh, as a decision. But let's go back to the thing in this clip that made me go, wow. And it's the shrugs going right back to uh, Camille Debra and her research. So he shrugs twice, exactly twice in that whole clip. He illustrates the shoulders twice. The first one is when he says, it's hard. It's hard to go back and look at all these videos that we did and all this stuff. And in that moment, I think it's, I don't know what to say. Like I, and this is, it's so reflected in what he's saying here. Like, I don't know what to say. On the one hand, there's all these memories, but on the other hand, he did this horrible thing. So it's hard. I don't know what else to say. And at the end, it's just perfect. He shrugs again as he says, it's weird. And he follows that with, we're sorry this ever happened. And here it is, the golden line, we don't know what more to say. It's weird. We're sorry that this ever happened and we don't know what more to say. And that's perfect. I think that is him putting into words exactly why that shrug happened and even the previous shrug. Because if we go back to the research we talked about earlier, shrugs mean I don't something. And if we look at that third category, epistemic shrugs, it's literally one of the categories to say that we shrug when I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to add. I can't add anything to that. So I think we're seeing exactly an epistemic shrug there. And then he's even putting it into words and explaining why that shrug happened. I guarantee you he doesn't know he shrugged, but he's telling you the words that go along with that gesture. And we also have some branded videos that we've already committed to. So when you see a video that's sponsored in a few weeks and you're like, oh, that's kind of weird. Well, yeah, it is kind of weird. Um, it's just how things are and that, that's why. All right, so here's a great example of how sometimes body language can mean more than one thing quite often. And, uh, you know, it's, it's up for debate. No one always has all the answers. There are no absolutes. So, and it's also strange. It's, it's a strange thing going on over here. So Keith is talking about how uh, you know, they already have some branded videos that they've committed to. So if in a couple of weeks you see a sponsored video, it's, it's something that they can't get out of. As he says that, Zach, for the first time, laughs. I mean, he smiled earlier, but he, he chuckles. He looks down and he chuckles to himself. And at the same time, or shortly after, we see Eugene just going like this. So there's a couple of possibilities that could explain this. One could very well be, and I think this is quite likely, that one of these videos was, was fun or funny or something. And again, throughout a lot of this, Zach is reflecting on their times together. So I think as he's thinking back to it, he remembers something fun that happened and he just laughs about that video, that branded video. And it's possible that Eugene doing this is him responding to Zach laughing. Like, it's not the time to laugh. They're really a unit here. They're really a unit. They're very aware of each other. So it could very well be that he's hearing that snickering and it's quite simply like, there's nothing funny about this. Again, remember, disagreement. I disagree that there's anything funny here. My second theory is, is more about Eugene because once again, when it comes to Zach, I can't really explain that laughter in any other way than a thought entered his mind related to these videos that they made that's making him laugh. And Eugene's nod isn't so much disagreement with the laughter or disapproval of the laughter, but him thinking about how like they worked on all these videos and what a, what a shame, what like disbelief. He still can't believe what's going on here. And he wants you again as the audience to know like, you know, these videos are out there and there's nothing we could do. And I, I still can't believe this. So I think it'd be either one, either Eugene disapproves of Zach laughing or is just in, in disbelief over the situation. And, and they worked on all these videos and he still can't believe that you know, they're gonna have to go through all this to cut him out of the business. Let me know in the comments which of those two you think is most likely, or do you have another answer? Look, I get that when stuff like this happens, there's going to be speculation and gossip. And we ask that you respect the privacy of the family members and employees who may be caught up in this. We also wanna remind you 
that the internet has a tendency to be a lot harsher towards women than men. So please, we ask that you exercise kindness. So that is, in terms of words, in terms of what they're saying, one of the ones that got my attention the most. Um, we haven't done too much verbal analysis today at all. We've been mostly focusing on the body language and facial expressions. We're gonna ask you to respect the privacy of the family members and the employees uh, who are involved in this. So clearly, I think the undertone there is that they're talking about Ned's wife, because that's the family member that you know, she's involved. And, and the employee is the, the woman that he was cheating with. So he's asking the audience to be kind to them, but not Ned. I really feel like Eugene specifically has a lot of anger directed straight to Ned. Because no part of this is saying, you know, he messed up, uh, let him deal with this thing, we've dealt with this. But you know, the internet isn't the place to deal with this. There's no part of him saying, there's no part of him the same way Zach was thinking about that person, that friend that they built this with, Eugene doesn't seem to have that. But he is being very protective of the women involved in this. Then he goes on to say, the internet tends to be harsher on women than men, so we ask you to exercise kindness. It's very ambiguous to me, like what are you asking of us? Are you asking us to only focus our uh, criticism and gossip to Ned? Like leave the women out of this, only attack Ned? Is this like a subtle hint? to the subscribers, like, I, you're allowed to be pissed at Ned, just don't be pissed at the women. I don't know, there seems to be an undertone to this message, and I'm not 100% sure what it is. But this does bring me to a thought that's been in my head quite often while watching this video, and that is the fact that I think there's a little bit more going on than Ned simply cheating on his wife with an employee. Because I get it, I get that uh, one of the owners having an affair with an employee is unacceptable, but I kind of feel like when you've built something for eight years with someone, you know, there are other options. There's the options of saying, what you did is disgusting. Uh, it's gonna take a very long time for me to trust you as a friend, as a colleague again. You're gonna get on this camera. You're gonna apologize to the fans. The way they've just completely cut him out, you know, I think what he did is disgusting. I think infidelity is one of the worst things someone can do. But also cutting someone's entire income that's also a terrible thing. I mean, he supports his family with this money and they're just cutting him out. And I guess that's up for debate. You know, was this punishment uh, too much or was this the appropriate response to what Ned did? But just something about this, the, the, the stress I'm getting when they talk about the full truth or the whole story, the fact that they flat out admit that they can't go into every detail here, the fact that Eugene seems really, really decisive, like there was no debate in his head, I just feel like there's more to this story than what we're seeing. But it's gonna be hard. It's, this whole thing is gonna be really hard. And we imagine you have lots of questions, a lot more questions right now, and, and we're gonna have more to say in the future. Uh, just right now we're focused on bringing the best content possible between now and the end of the year, and then figuring out what the future of this channel looks like from there. Okay, I literally just left that clip in there because once again, I wanted you to see that gesture from Keith which is a smile that kind of looks like disgust, but I don't believe it is, just before he speaks. Uh, and there isn't really anything that it seems he's responding or reacting to emotionally. He literally just does this, like this kind of raised disgust smile. Again, it, I think it's just a smile that he does. Like I think it's one of many smiles, because we see other smiles in this where it's just kind of a little smile like this. I just think it's a habit of someone with glasses to smile that way. I think this is kind of a baseline behavior for him. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that particular smile elsewhere because it is strange and it's not something I've seen very often. Okay, so there it was. That was a lot to unpack, but overall I think there was a lot of great lessons there, uh, particularly on shrugging and all the different reasons we shrug and some great examples in this video. The differences between baseline and idiosyncratic gestures uh, and, and how we can look for those two different things and the differences in what they mean. Uh, also just some great stuff on no gestures and what those can mean and overall stress and the communication of stress. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this. Let me know your opinion on this whole situation. What do you think is going on here? Do you think there's a little bit more to this story than what we're getting? And I will see you on the next one.